Hey Mini Infuse, yes, how are you doing? So something a little bit different this week, uh, actually doing some work on Vinny. So I did mention in one of my previous videos actually that I've got some Christmas presents. Uh, one I was just waiting for, kind of knew about a bit. Um, so I've got them now uh, and it's a present from Vinny and it's from my mate Mark saying thanks Mark. Uh, and I thought I'd just do a bit of an unboxing and I'll do a little guide or a little comparison on fitting them actually. So what he got me was a set of the um, LED headlights from Total Car Reviews. So Tom Shorrock, um, you'd have seen in his videos, he's fitted them on his Mini he's just built. Um, and you can buy them on his website as well. And they are a very, very good price when you start looking at the prices of these LED headlights. Um, so yeah, uh, go and check them out. I'll put a link down in the description down the bottom. And I thought I'd just do a little bit of a video about the headlights and me fitting them on Vinny as well. So um, first off, let's see what's in the box. So they come packaged up pretty well. <coughs> um, in the box, you get the fitting instructions and then inside, obviously you get the pair of headlights. <coughs> So a couple of things I wasn't sure about to begin with, they're dot uh, SAE marked, E marked at the top. Um, they are what looks like polycarbonate lenses, um, so they should be sort of scratch resistant um, and they shouldn't break very easily. They're probably stronger than glass actually if it's polycarbonate. Uh, and on the back of the light, you obviously just get the... Um, the connector, which is a standard sort of H4 headlight, three pin connector. And then you get the two wires on there as well. So built into these headlights, it has the indicator um, and they call them daytime running lights, but on a Mini, the Mini doesn't have daytime running lights, it's just a side light. So you get side light on the outer ring, um, you'll get the low beam and high beam on the LED lights. I believe they're probably Cree LEDs, I would think. Um, so the two, the, you've got the H4 connector which goes onto the standard wiring loom and then you just need to run two signal wires so that's the positive wire from the indicator um, and the positive wire from the side light just to give you the halo around the edge there. Uh, so these are headlights I've got in Vinny at the moment so we'll do a bit of a comparison. So these are like um, rear reflectors, I think they call them crystal lenses. Um, and they've got, uh, they're actually these bulbs, so they're ring xenon max, uh, meant to be 100% more light on the road. Again, they're 60, yeah, 60 watt 55, so 60 watt high 55 low. Um, they're, they're very good bulbs they are, so I upgraded from the standard uh, halogen bulbs. Um, to those and the difference was light and day so these are very very good um, and if you've got the old sealed beam lights I mean that in itself going to H4s is a massive upgrade God knows what these lights are going to be like but I think what we do uh, we're getting fitted on Vinny what I'll probably do I've got a nice dark close I live in so I might do one side or a before and after comparison and yeah we'll see what they like so bear with me and uh, we'll get them fitted so guys, fitting these headlights is pretty simple. Um, like I said, what we're going to do to begin with, we're just going to mark the headlight alignment where the car is. So the car's not going to move. We'll fit the new headlights on and see how they line up. In theory, we're using the existing bevel uh, and the existing headlights surround. Um, so it should remain the same as long we, as long as we don't adjust the adjustment screws. But we're just going to see what it's like just for reference to begin with. Placed a floor mat on the bench here. And I think what I'll do is I'll just mark on this floor mat kind of where the bottom of the beam is. So when we fit the new headlight, uh, we should see the base of the headlight beam around about there and we'll adjust it accordingly. We could actually mark the middle there, middle of the spot. So I did actually forget to mention uh, in the pack of headlights uh, themselves, you obviously you get some spare wire. So this is just for the signal wire down to the side light. 
and the indicator and they'll just go to the positive wires on the side light and the indicator um, you also get um, you get an adapter which it says on the instructions this is for a Chrysler Jeep so um, obviously the headlight fitting on a Chrysler Jeep is not a standard sort of H4 connector onto the back of the bulb it probably goes into the headlight unit first so you get an adapter there you also get this black box here which um, caused a bit of confusion um, uh, wasn't quite sure to begin with so I had a look at it uh, and it looks like what it is it's a uh, a box for falling the CAN bus network on a modern car so on a modern car if you change around things like the bulbs you fit like a tow bar and things like that you either have to reprogram the onboard control unit or it will come up with an error it'll put an error message on or it'll it'll put a warning light on the dashboard or, or maybe the bulb won't work at all so this is like a a CAN bus um, kind of cheat device really so this just makes the CAN bus system on the car I think it's got a standard headlamp fitted in it and will make it work so that's not needed on a mini uh, that's not needed on a mini uh, so yeah pretty straightforward to be honest so let's crack on with it right guys I thought I'd just run through you the full fitting on this side so fairly simple screw out the bottom there about the bottom of the headlamp bears all the headlamp bezel uh, pivots from the top, so it's clipped in the top. You just pull out the bottom, lift up, unclips. Out comes a the bezel. There is a little rubber washer inside there to hold the screw in place. That's probably long gone on some minis. So the adjuster's up the top there for up and down left and right adjuster over here. So the only screw you need to move to get the headlamp out is this one here. Pop that out. Pop it out the top adjuster, side adjuster. That's it. And then pop the connector off the back. So my connector on this one's actually damaged. So the spade connectors are still there, but the actual terminal for it's damaged. So I just need to remember what terminals they go on, which is not a problem. So just moving on to the bench here, like I was saying about the Jeep Wrangler. So it says for that, you have to use the headlights, the uh, CAN bus. Um, I don't think what you call it, it even says CAN bus on that little diagram naturally. So it's the CAN bus kind of defeat box um, and then the wiring harness adapter. So we don't need all of that. So then this is very, very straightforward. So top of the headlight, um, there's these screws with brackets on the back of them, which hold the bowl in. So just to make life easy for yourself, align everything up as you're doing it. So top of the headlight there, top of the new headlight there, and that lines up with that uh, top adjuster there. So this couldn't be simpler now. That's the top of the headlight there with the dot mark. And the clips line up very nicely on the back there.
So there we go, very, very simple, isn't it? All we've got to do now is make up the wires for the indicator and side light. I would recommend, I've done these before, but these uh, little tabs corrode really on the back of here, so just spray them with a bit of wax or something like that, just, stop, just to stop them corroding. So this is fairly simple here. We won't be using this side light connector anymore. So the negative wire we can just cut away and we'll actually leave that on there. It's not gonna arc out on anything. We do need the positive wire though. So we will just cut that back there, pull off the heat sink. That's that ready to go. We need to just trim that back. And from the wiring they give us, we just need, it's the red wire, which is the one for the side light. This one here, and we don't actually need much of it. Probably about that much, just so we can get it connected up. Same again, just bear that back at the end. We're gonna use a special type of connector on this. So it's, uh, it's not a solder lift connector. Basically what there is, is a little bit of solder right in the middle. Um, it has two rubber silicon uh, rings at either end. And it's, a, it's what they call a self-sealing solder connector, I think. So basically all you do, I don't know whether this will show up that well, you poke the wire in through the rubber sealing ring, through the pre-solder bit in the middle So you get both bits of wire through the through the bit of solder in the middle. And basically as you heat that up, it seals up the end and solders it at the same time. So you're never gonna have an issue with moisture getting into that. And then all we're gonna use is a heat gun now. And that perfectly solders that and seals up the edge of the ends as well with a rubber silicon seal on there. It's gonna be, that'll last forever, that connector. I will just put a bit of black heat sink over it as well just to tidy it up a bit though. Next bit's fairly simple. So we need to go the yellow wire down to the indicator down at the bottom. Or well, we could go to the side repeater. I think I'll go to the indicator just to make it nice and neat. And what we can do is we can just utilize the existing grommet that's inside there. So you might find a bit of grease on here helps. And all I need to do, turn the steering wheel around, give myself a gap, grab that from the inside in a wing. Get them about the same length, that's good. Next bit is a little bit more tricky. Just got to take the indicator out on this side, the indicator unit. We need to know what colour wire is positive, so what, what, what colour wire goes to the middle terminal on the bulb. So that's a green wire. And we need to cut back the insulation a tiny bit. Don't want to go too mad here, as little intrusion as possible. That's it, there we go. So we can just get into the back of that boot now. Find our yellow wire, thread it through. Then just into the back of this rubber cover here. And 
And basically, if I fold this cover back for the moment, just to make my life easier. And what we need to do is carefully patch into or splice into this green wire here. So we're not actually going to cut the wire. We don't want to do that because if we cut it, um, it's an area for then corrosion later on then. So we want to keep the wire intact. Uh, this yellow wire, let's have a little bit of slack in there. We can tie it up. And all we're going to do, nip back this yellow wire. This green wire here, if we are very careful, what we should be able to do is just peel back a bit of that insulation without actually cutting the wire. So there you go, like that. And what we do is we solder onto that, so we're not actually going to break into the wire at all. We'll solder onto that, re-insulate it, and then, um, yeah, it's about as neat and tidy as we can make it without damaging the original wire too much. You do need to make sure that the wire itself is good, so it should be nice and shiny. If it's gone all black like it does with copper, you've had it really. You need to be cutting the whole lot out and starting again. So we just need to tin both ends, get a bit of uh, solder on them. See where I've heated that, that insulation's just shrunk back a bit now, so pull it back again. That's it. Get our wire ready. Tin the end of the soldering iron again. And then it should be just dab on there with a bit of heat. So there we go, lovely solder connector. And all we've got to do is just insulate this little bit here, which we'll do with a bit of insulating tape. Because it's uh, we've not broken the connection, we can't use like a, um, a shrink, heat shrink connector on it, which is a bit of a shame, but it's better than breaking into the wire. So that's insulated up now. Um, like I say, it's better if you can get a bit of heat shrink on it, but we've actually made that connection inside the rubber boot there, so we shouldn't have too, much, too many problems with that. So if I just pull that rubber boot back now, you see what I mean? The actual connection's inside the rubber boot, so. And then all we've got to do is just seal up this end now. Really important to make that sure that's well insulated there because that's right on the inside of the wheel arch. It gets all the water, it gets all the dirt, it gets all the spray and crud off the road. Um, so yeah, it will corrode really easily. Um, and then I think what we will do is just belt some braces. We'll just spray some wax inside here. It'll just stop that corroding. So that's our red and our yellow wire. There are headlamp wires. So we are nearly there. So uh, we'll just close up these terminals so they're a snug fit. On your headlight, the whole block should be there. It should be okay. It's just because this one's broken. And now we've just got to fit that headlamp in. I'll get a bit fussy about these things, but I um, don't like things corroding, so... We're just going to put a bit of grease on these connectors here. So 
and we'll do the same with these but on the headlight. So Make sure that all those are a snug fit because if they're not, you get high resistance there and it will burn out eventually. And finally, Fits neatly up the side there, top of the headlight, adjuster in, top adjuster in. That's it, pretty simple. Hopefully it works now. Perfect. I do need to tidy up yet, but pretty pleased with the overall look of them. Let's go and see how bright they are. So as a comparison, this is the standard headlights. So it's side lights, dip, uh, main beam, and flash. Right guys, so this is kind of the aftershot, so no lights, side lights, dip, and main beam, and then flash. They are very, very bright. Um, I am just conscious uh, of the headlight alignment, so don't want to be dazzling other drivers. So um, I might take that to my local MOT station and just get that double checked. <laughs> 